Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video, no, your eyes aren't deceiving you, I'm wearing a fleece <laughs> which is a rarity for me and that can only mean one thing and that is that we are approaching the depths of autumn. It's certainly considerably cooler in the evenings and mornings, I'm sure you will have noticed by now and that can only mean one thing, we need to start thinking about our wildlife, how we can help it get through those the rest of the autumn and indeed more importantly the colder winter months so in this video i'm going to be giving you the top seven tips that you can do to help wildlife in your own garden and prepare it for the winter months so stay tuned and let's see how you guys can help wildlife in your garden this autumn and winter so I should say guys, before we get started, that this video is designed to help you all around the world, wherever you are, because a lot of these principles can be adapted to wherever you may live. So stay tuned because I'm sure a lot of these will make sense to you and certainly help your local wildlife. So tip number one is feed your birds. Now, this is an enormous topic and I, I'm not even going to begin to cover all bases in this video today but i want to show you some important ways that you can help birds in a very beneficial way now obviously in the wild at this time of year as we approach the winter months as we're in autumn at the moment there will be a lot of natural seeds and a lot of, a lot of berries and fruits available for birds which is of course a great way for them to find a natural resource but however with the intensification of agriculture with the loss of so much habitat all around the world not just the uk but north and southern hemisphere uh, with deforestation with as i say the intensification of agriculture a lot of the natural food sources are dwindling for our birds so it's a really good idea to start feeding them at this time of year if you haven't been feeding them already now i've done a previous video on some of the three best foods you can use to help birds um, through the winter months and indeed all year round i actually feed my birds all year round which is a good idea, but um, so I'm not going to go into the full depth of that today, but I just want to show you some of the ways in which you can help them. Now, as I've just said, the natural resources are best for the birds, but if we need to supplement them, we can do. Now, the seed heads that you might find in your own garden that will be beneficial to birds, such as goldfinches, are going to be things like the lesser or black knapweed, dandelions as well, which will have sometimes seeds on at this time of year, um, devil's bit scabious, uh, some of the trees as well will have seeds, things such as beech with the masts, um, alder, silver birch, they're all going to have seeds on them. So they're a great natural resource for the birds at this time of year. But obviously, uh, and those stems of some of those plants that I've just mentioned, things like the knapweed and the dandelion, when they're hollowed out, can also be a really good example of some sort of overwintering ground for things such as ladybirds, like the one in this photo here that I saw in a meadow that I created a few years ago. So yes, the, it's a really good idea to leave some vegetation through the winter months as I've already spoken about as well for birds, for cover for other wildlife, etc. So again, check out previous videos on the channel guys as to how you can manage some of your areas to help wildlife in terms of longer grassy areas, all that kind of thing. Uh, but yes, I would leave these stems as long as you can through the winter months because you will no doubt find that a lot of them are visited by some of our garden visiting birds at this time of year. So naturally, as the nights get longer and the temperatures drop, then a lot of our garden birds are going to really, well, a lot of birds in general are going to really feel that drop in temperature and they are therefore going to expend more energy just surviving through the night something like 40 percent of our blue tits actually die every year so that's why they have such a huge clutch in terms of the eggs it's you know kind of uh, surviving through numbers if you like so um, it's really important to for them to find enough food every day to replenish the fat reserves that they may have used through the night just keeping warm so for example um, a blue tip might feed on 300 invertebrates in a single day and can spend up to 85% of every day in the winter time just replacing those fat night fat fat nights fat reserves from the night before um, but one thing they do do to try and combat these cooler temperatures 
things such as our house sparrows, for example, they actually at this time of year grow more downy feathers or their, their, their feathers get thicker in terms of the downy material. And it can, uh, they can increase in weight by up to 70% the actual feathers themselves. So if you see your house sparrows looking rather plump at this time of year, it's not because they've eaten loads and loads and loads of extra food. It's usually because they have just plumped their feathers up to try and reduce the heat loss. They're trying to create a more of a thermal barrier against the elements so it's a really really good thing and it's really vital for them to do this in order to survive some of the colder winters obviously with climate change a lot of our winters aren't quite as cold as they used to be however obviously the, a lot of these birds further north into scotland and into scandinavia that are going to be there resident all year are certainly going to feel more of a pinch so yes one thing you can do is therefore provide some really uh, good protein and fats for these birds so that they can build up as much weight as possible and recoup those that energy that they have spent the night before. So one of the ways in which you can help these birds to replace those fat reserves day after day is of course by providing fat balls and suet feeders for them to make the most of that resource and obviously they don't have to expend a lot of energy to get a lot of fat back. So it's really good for things like blue tits, great tits, long-tailed tits, starlings. Uh, a lot of birds will use these feeders themselves. Um, and I have some great, great news guys. And that is that finally, after months and months of hard work from Nikki, Jody, and the web design team that we've been working with, we now have a brand new wildyourgarden.com online shop for you guys now obviously the shop's been around for a couple of years and before anybody says anything i know this may seem like a bit of a uh, sales advert but of course the main reason i started the wildyourgarden.com online shop is to help you guys so that you've got a one-stop shop for everything that you need to help wildlife throughout your own garden and of course all these free videos that i've been bringing you guys for the last three years are to help you provide those habitats for wildlife so hopefully uh, it's a really nice way in which we can create a, a community on here of where you can source everything you need get the information you need and then put it into practice yourselves so yes we have a brand new wildyourgarden.com online shop obviously we had the old shop but this is a whole new interface it's a lot more user friendly it looks different too and of course it's got a lot more products and hopefully you guys are going to find it very very helpful and i'm pleased to announce that with the new website we've got a lot more new products and one of them is i think this quite cool little thing here which is uh, i should have shown you the box actually it's a thing called flutter butter and this is a starter pack that you can get on the online shop now and it has been proven to be very very appealing to as you can see blue tits and great tits and i've tested this myself it does work very well and what it is in essence is a high fat content um, mix of you know, peanuts beef suet and it's really really good these little pots when they're empty are recyclable as well and what you do he says throwing one of them away it's just very simple you unscrew the top these look like a bit of security camera to begin with but you unscrew the top and you put that one's gone on the floor so i'll get another one it comes with three in the box you put one of these sachets so it's not sachet but you put them in and then you just screw it shut obviously you take the plastic film off the top and then there you have it you've got a nice little open fat feeder for the birds to absolutely gorge on obviously it's got two loops at the top comes with a little chain uh, with a hook on the end so that you can hang this from uh, your current bird um, bird feeding station or you can hang it from a bush or a tree you can put a little hook in the side of your pergola hang it from that obviously near cover guys is the best way to um, you know, provide food for birds so that they're not going to succumb to predation as easily from things such as uh, sharp shinned hawks and cooper's hawks for you guys in the states sparrow hawks here in the uk and on the continent um, yes this flutter butter is a really really good little product and obviously it's just refillable you can just buy the refills which we also sell which are again you can get in a pack of six and i believe a pack of 12 as well uh, robins love them as well robins obviously only a recent addition to bird feeders they've only in recent years in the past sort of five to ten years i've noticed started using bird feeders again showing how adaptable they are so yeah you can buy the refill packs quite easily online guys oh and i also should just say guys that the flutter butter is 
actually very very low salt content whereas uh, peanut butter is a high salt content for those of you that know your stuff you might be thinking well you can't feed peanut butter to birds absolutely right this is a very low salt content protein and fat rich product for your birds so yes the flutter butter starter pack is a great way to start helping the birds in your garden guys obviously we can ship to you if you're in the uk now the robin the nation's favorite bird who doesn't love seeing a robin in their own garden and you can help these in a slightly different way as well because robins are a bit more insectivorous they won't come to as feeder to a feeder as much even though i've just said they are adapting to our feeders they like more insect based diets and of course that's what they would be eating in the wild so we have this product which is a robin feeder it's basically got a, a bit of a, a perspex top if you, as you can see so it's very difficult for the squirrels to get a purchase they'll simply slip off it and it's got this little tray as well uh, with a few pre-drilled holes very well made um, that you can put the the food in so that will allow any moisture to sort of drain out or any water to drain out really good and to go in this we have a specially blended I love robins um, and it says soft moist and intensely rich for Britain's best loved bird well there you go we knew that already uh, but what's in it now what's different to this from uh, what's different from the wild your garden bird seed mix that i've obviously been selling in the past well uh on the back it's 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 claims to be for more soft build bird species so things such as thrushes blackbirds robins which are going to as i say be eating more insect based uh foods throughout the rest of the year of course um but in it there's there's fruit there's shrimps there's uh, small parts of insects there's tiny peanut pieces um there's already open sunflower seeds and with a, a rich blend of a little bit of honey as well, just to give them lots of protein. So it's a really good feed, guys. I have tried this at, at my house and it works very well. So, and you can, of course, put a little bit on the ground as well and uh, a lot of the blackbirds will come to it. Blackbirds, of course, don't tend to go to many feeding stations, so you're, you're more likely to get robins come to this one. Uh, but if you put a bit on the ground, you'll get robins and um, yeah, no doubt a few blackbird birds as well too. Now, I know point number one is taking a little while, guys, but uh, bear with me because hopefully this is all valuable information for you. Even if you're not in the UK and you're not going to buy some products, stay tuned. I promise you there's loads more valuable points coming up as to how you can help wildlife in your own garden. So, and I will move on to next, what you'd probably expect to see when feeding birds. Something like this four-port feeder, which no doubt many of you have got around the world and they are a great way of feeding the seeds to your uh, birds in your own garden now this is a really good one we've got a, a whole new range of these on the online shop uh, and these are you can't really hear very well these are metal components so the main body is plastic but the metal is the main important part here because as we've just been saying about the uh, squirrel proof feeders squirrels as you know if you've had sort of basic cheap plastic feeders in the past they'll just chew straight through them all your seeds start spilling over the floor and you end up running down the garden waving a broom or throwing kitchen knives at squirrels which i don't recommend um, so i would highly recommend looking at getting something like this guys even if obviously you're not in the uk and we can't ship to you look at metal um, ported feeders they're far better in terms of preventing uh, squirrels getting in and getting to your seed i'm going to do a live dem live demonstration here because to go with this feeder obviously for the last few years we've had uh, the wildy garden <laughs> special blend of bird seed that i have worked with um, a, a current supplier to get this just right it's an absolutely no mess seed so if you are looking for a seed that you can put on the ground you can put in your feeders and will cater from everything to uh, will cater for everything from collared doves and wood pigeons which are a little bit unfortunately maligned i think these days they are just because they're a common species people think think oh it's only a collared dove or a wood pigeon and they're only trying to survive like we are and it's just because they're successful i think that we shun them sometimes but uh, they deserve a right to eat as much as anything else but along with that you will get other birds eating this too such as blue tits greenfinches goldfinches chaffinches blackbirds um 
long-tailed tits, great tits, you know, anything that will visit your garden almost, uh, apart from a sparrowhawk. <laughs> if you find a sparrowhawk eating seed on your feeder, by the way, I'd love to see the photo of that. Um, but this is a really great blend and it's got in it, it's got peanut granules, canary seed, I have to remind myself there, white millet, sunflower hearts, uh, rolled oats, um, and it's a really, really good mix. Uh, little suet pellets as well. I'll show you a bit. It's a really nice, if you can see that, make that out. A really nice blend. And the peanuts are smaller, they're broken up, so of course they're fine to feed all year round as well, even when uh, birds have chicks. It's the whole peanuts and the half peanuts that cause a problem to chicks when the adult birds are trying to feed them. They can choke on them. Uh, I know I've already said that in a previous video. My themed mug for seed covered in butterflies and of course with these very simple pour it straight in you're going to make a bit of mess so do this over the area where you want to feed well, not too bad actually only a few bits spilled and then of course you can just simply slide the top on comme ça perfect and these are very very easy to clean they've got a quick release mechanism at the bottom so you can drop the bottom off um, and that way you can clean them out and i would say it's vital to clean your bird feeders very regularly guys so you're not encouraging diseases such as the trichinomosis i think is how it's pronounced uh, which has absolutely obliterated chaffinch and greenfinch populations here in the uk and it's all because of disease at feeders a lot of it so yes clean your feeders regularly but something like this as you can see is really great the birds can then just hop onto there and get the seed that they want to get straight away we have got something rather special hopefully coming to the uh the online shop very soon in terms of a cool product that is a feeder so yes the wild garden 13 kilo sacks very very good very trusted seed i'll put a bit of a, of a review in now of an email we, we received from one customer who is very pleased with this i've got people that come back for this all the time and it's great as i say because it is a no mess bird food so it doesn't contain lots of wheat like a lot of the cheap bird foods that you get in the shops where the wheat is often just left a lot of birds apart from the wood pigeons and collar doves won't touch it there's no wheat in it um, and is a no mess so there's no husks of any sunflower hearts the sunflowers are already peeled and crushed so you don't have to do anything there won't be a drop left of this stuff once the birds have found it so i highly recommend if you can guys get yourself some of the wild garden special bird food mix so since we've been talking about feeding the birds and in the beginning of this video i was talking about natural food sources for the birds from native trees and shrubs point number two guys is as we now approach the bare root season from november through till march is get some native trees and shrubs in your garden as i say these will be available very soon on the wildergarden.com online shop so things such as hazel gelderose spindle holly uh, rowan silver birch uh, hawthorn there's so many different shrubs and trees to choose from obviously check out the video that i've done previously on the channel of how to plant a tree if you want to know exactly how to do that the right way to plant a tree yes there's a right and a wrong way or many wrong ways actually um, and a couple of right ways but uh, check that video out if you are looking to plant a tree or shrub in your garden this autumn same applies for the shrubs as well uh, they really are the best way to providing the natural food sources so right the way from the spring when we have things such as aphids which are going to be vital aphids provide such a massive uh, part of the diet of some of the young chicks that we find in our nest boxes in the springtime uh, but caterpillars as well obviously caterpillars are the main food source for a lot of tit species blue tits great tits you know they will feed hundreds of caterpillars uh, over the course of a few days to their young so yes caterpillars obviously are going to be munching on some of the leaves of these native trees and shrubs and again this applies to wherever you are around the world guys so it doesn't matter whether you're in china or you know northwest america or south africa the native trees and shrubs that are found within your region are going to be the most beneficial in terms of attracting the most insects and therefore attracting the most birds and 
where they flower, they're going to attract more insects as well naturally, which in turn, once pollinated, are going to create the autumn source of berries as well, which we've already spoken about in this video. So things such as the rowan tree, synonymous with uh, field fairs, red wings, uh, missile thrushes, song thrushes, blackbirds, wax wings, if you're fortunate enough to see them in cold winters. So yes, berries are a vital source of food for birds in the winter months. And of course, most of them will be best found on the native trees and shrubs that are indigenous to your area around the world. So do your research. And obviously, if you are in the UK, we can recommend species. Drop us an email, inquiries at wildyourgarden.com. I'm always happy to advise on quantities and species mixes. If you're looking to plant a new hedgerow this autumn or winter, if you're looking to plant individual trees and shrubs, we're always happy to help guys. The end of the day, it's all about creating more habitats for wildlife. So yes, number two is get some native trees and shrubs in your garden this autumn and winter. So since we've been talking about feeding the birds one more thing you can do to help them massively in your own garden is of course to provide a house for them or a bird box now not only will this provide somewhere for them to obviously uh, raise their young in depending on the species of course which we'll come on to a few of the examples in a moment but it will give a great opportunity for a lot of birds to roost as well so number three is bird boxes and did you know that according to the bto uh, the wren, the lovely little Eurasian wren that we get here, I know in the States you guys get the Carolina wren, uh, but in, in the UK and in uh, Europe we get the Eurasian wren, and up to 63 of these have been recorded roosting in one box overnight when it's got particularly cold. So it just goes to show all those birds, I love the idea of them all huddled together, but it just goes to show that they need to do this to keep warm, to survive, to simply survive the winter months. So bird boxes, I know we think of them as somewhere for raising chicks, but they're also a great place for birds to roost all year, really, basically, because so much of our uh, deadwood in our countryside is felled if it's a likely risk to falling on uh, a road or a highway. Uh, so standing deadwood in the wider countryside, natural uh, holes for birds to nest, for whole nesting birds such as uh, the house sparrow, starling, um, you know, robins, blue tits, great tits, robins, although won't take so much to the whole boxes, they'll be more of an open fronted box. Uh, we've lost so much of that habitat. And uh, there's two birds that I'd like to talk to you about now and ways in which you can help them by putting up these boxes. Well guys, I am very, very pleased to announce that we have a whole new range of bird boxes available for you on the online shop. Now, this is one of our starling boxes, which I would like to talk to you for a moment now, about for a moment. Now, the starling is one of our most iconic species, if you ask me, certainly in an urban setting. And, you know, they're such a kind of a raucous bunch when you see them, but they have suffered massive, massive declines in the last few decades and since 1979 here in the UK we have seen an 80% decrease in their numbers and on the continent in Europe apparently about 40 million birds have now been lost in the general population so they have dropped massively since the last sort of 20-30 years shall we say and a lot of this is due to um, Basically, uh, a lot of their food used to be, the natural food would be the crane flies or the larvae of the crane flies, the kind of the uh, daddy long legs, if you like, that you see as a kid, um, that a few of the evil children at school would pull the wings off, which is awful. I never did such a thing. I was always fascinated by them. But uh, yeah, they, they obviously, the larvae used to be in long grassy areas and um, fields and things. But of course, thanks to uh, a lot of the intensification of pesticide use and that sort of thing, these insects have dropped massively and so have therefore the starlings. Not only that, they've lost a lot of their uh, nesting potential in a lot of the eaves of a lot of their houses. Starlings, although we get uh, probably rather frustrated, some of us with the noise of the chicks kind of in the, <laughs> the summer months, you know, when coming from your guttering or your soffits, it might get a bit frustrating, but just think about how amazing these birds are, that they come and live with us alongside us and they're very opportunistic. So it's all the more reason to be putting up one of these boxes. Now, the boxes, there's a whole new range, as I say, we've got on the online shop, which is brilliant. These are made from finished ply. 
is in the country, not the type of finish. Uh, they are very, very good. And we've been working with our manufacturer or our supplier to make these. We've even got our Wildy Garden logo on the front. How about that? <laughs> and these don't need treating. So they are a purely natural wood, which has had a, a, a lamination process that means they are guaranteed for five years outside and they last a lot longer. Uh, and they really are a fantastic product to have on the side of your house. North or east facing is the best guys for when you're putting up bird boxes. Um, so yes, and this one has a 38 mil hole for the starlings. Obviously they're bigger than our sparrow, house sparrows and blue tits and great tits. So that's why this one has a bigger hole and it's a slightly bigger box as well. And they will normally come with a bit more of a back plate for you to fix on. They're already pre-drilled. They've got drainage holes in the bottom as well. And they are just a really solid construction, which I'm really thoroughly trust some really love uh, thoroughly trust. I'm really thoroughly chuffed with uh, some really nice details. You can see how these have been notched together for additional strength. The side of the roof, you can see there, notched in as well. So some really nice detailing in these boxes and quite reasonably priced, I think, compared to a lot of the other boxes you can get on the market. So yes, the starling is certainly a bird that we should be helping in our urban environment. And another species I think we really should be championing is the house sparrow. Now this looks pretty much fundamentally like a blue tit or a great tit box, which of course it is. It's practically the same dimensions, um, slightly bigger hole. It's a 32 mil hole for a house sparrow. And they are just a really, really desperately in need bird. We've lost 71% of our house sparrows here in the UK since the 70s. So they've seen a massive decline, similar to the starlings. And that's due to a number of reasons, the intensification of uh, agricultural practices in terms of pesticide use, but again, pesticide use within our own gardens, killing a lot of the insects, killing obviously uh, the food source therefore of the house sparrow. Uh, obviously when people are replacing the fascias and soffits around their guttering, it's all new airtight plastic. And so the, the house sparrows can't get into a little rotten off piece of wood in the corner and nest inside our houses, hence the name. So it's a real shame that these birds have dropped so massively. I know they are common when you find them in certain places on the continent, but they are red listed along with the starling here in the UK. So we really need to be helping them out and of course providing natural food for them and some of the food sources that we've already spoken about in today's video and the wood i should say as well guys has insect fungal and weather repellent uh, properties so it is a really really good timber i am not aware of uh, many manufacturers that are actually using this grade of timber in the uk to make these boxes hence they don't even need painting before you put them up so a really good addition so yes that's the house sparrow and the starling and i'd like to talk to you about my all-time favorite bird now now, for those of you that know me and have followed the channel for a while, you will know that my all time favorite bird is the house martin and they really, really need our help along with swifts and swallows and a lot of the migratory species that come from Africa every single year to nest on our houses. What a privilege it is. And they have had a massive decline again due to a lot of the nesting sites being uh, inaccessible to them nowadays because again the plastic faces and soffits stopping them from getting under the traditional wooden eaves of our houses. Fear not we have a product that's going to help them and it's one that we've worked with the uh, manufacturer with and I absolutely love this product it's really couldn't get more eco-friendly as well. Now this is a house martin box as you can guess and you might be thinking well how do you fix that to a wall, Joel? You know, where does it go? And it goes under the eaves. By the way, we do send all these boxes out, guys, with fitting instructions and fixings as well, I believe. Don't quote me on that, although I think we do. <laughs> um, but certainly the instructions. Anyway, you simply attach this back plate or the wall plates, which has got the pre-drilled holes, uh, depending on how you want to attach it, underneath the soffit or fascia, um, as long as it's out direct sunlight. Um, and that will go on south, north, east or west facing wall, north or east if you can preferably, but as long as it's not in direct sunlight, it'll be fine. And these boxes, although they look 
and sound like plastic are actually made from cornstarch and sawdust. So you really couldn't get any more environmentally friendly guys and in the right conditions, they will biodegrade over a, a space of time. So they really are fantastic and they should last for a very, very long time. So once you've got your plate fixed, you can then simply, as you can see, just slide the top on like that and there you'll have your little house martin cup how cool is that and the way these these are actually built using a 3d printer which is even more impressive i think and the sort of hollow structure inside helps insulate in the cold and protect from overheating as well in the summer months we've got lots of little air pockets so absolutely brilliant these house martin um, boxes or nest cups if you like i hope to sell about three million of these uh, just so that we can get lots more house martins in our houses. Absolutely love this bird and obviously if you can please get some of these guys and stick them up. I believe these are some of the only ones available in the country um, and the manufacturer has worked their socks off to produce these and we have some more coming, some even more life like or realistic looking sort of almost like mud colored textured ones as well so yes lots more to come on that but the house martin boxes as well along with many others i should say so we've also got bat boxes we've also got um you know things like robin boxes as well blue tick great tick. so check out the website guys for all the whole list of products but just so pleased to announce we are work, working with uh, this new manufacturer to provide you guys with all these nesting potentials so point number four, now that we've talked about bird boxes and how you can help by providing a nesting potential for our feathered friends, we move on to a different box. And no, although it looks like I could fit inside it and I might use this for when I'm working around the country for sleeping in from time to time, <laughs> this is indeed a hedgehog box. Now you might be thinking, well, why is it so enormous, Joel? Well, hedgehogs actually need a reasonable amount of room to properly nest. It's one thing sleeping, but actually nesting, they need a fair bit of room to get all their bedding in there. So point number four is provide some habitats for our lovely little prickly friends. Now, hedgehogs, unfortunately, have been on the decline for a number of decades, and it's believed that they have dropped by in the region of 30 to 75%, depending on what region of the UK you're in over the last few decades which is just awful although the good news is they seem to be stabilizing in a few more urban areas uh, where they are less likely to get predated by things like badgers because there's more of an ample source of food um, and there's obviously more food for them so one of the ways you can really help apart from providing access to your garden by cutting holes in head in fences and indeed having hedgerows and not fences if you're planning a new boundary consider a hedge and not a fence guys and obviously you know these things are called hedgehogs so there's a reason they are a hedgehog uh, they love the kind of the the literary leafy um, or leaf literary <laughs> they don't like litter <laughs> they love leaf litter so snuffling around in vegetation in back gardens under hedgerows is absolutely ideal habitat for them uh, they eat a lot of insects a lot of invertebrates They'll eat any, they'll even eat sort of small newts and frogs, actually. They'll eat anything they can get hold of that has a bit of meat to it. So, uh, yeah, it's a very varied diet, a lot of worms, obviously. Um, so the more you can provide some more habitat for them in terms of longer grassy areas to hunt through, herbaceous borders, and don't be too tidy, guys. They really won't appreciate it because if you clear all the leaves out the bottom of your hedge, you're going to clear a lot of... Um, caterpillar larvae that are overwintering there you're going to clear a lot of wood lice spiders all sorts of these guys are going to be munching on so here's one way you can help and stick some straw in it now this is our very own i'm very proud as you can probably tell to announce a wild Deer garden hedgehog box which has been designed especially for them i'll take a bit of the wrapping out but you can see inside that it actually has an entrance way that stops predators getting in things like cats they can be attacked by cats dogs um, obviously badgers as well foxes so by having that as a bit of a kind of an entrance way it stops the predators getting in so they can get into the main chamber safely and be safe there uh, for the rest of the night or the rest of the day should i say obviously they're a nocturnal species and they can travel up to a mile a night um, so yes they are 
in need of houses like this. Obviously, they don't have things like this in the wild, so where you can provide natural habitats for them, if you can't quite stretch to buying one of these, uh, then do create some leaf piles and grass piles and then put some brash on top as well so it's nice and kind of insulated in the middle and if you do get one of these guys then do put some straw and things in the middle just to give them a nice little welcome gift as they find your new home. Somewhere sheltered as well not kind of on the edge of a street where you know somebody might come along and hey who knows pick it up and throw it or whatever but in your uh, if I've got one in my front garden so put it against a wall or somewhere sheltered not in direct sunlight so that they can stay nice and sheltered out the wind as well uh, and providing a habitat for these hedgehogs can be really really beneficial and it can literally save their lives so yes and obviously providing the food for them as well is just as important and uh, some water for them to drink so Hedgehog boxes, just one of the many other boxes that we now offer on the online shop. As I say, we're also doing tawny, bo tawny owl boxes, barn owl boxes, swift boxes as well. Uh, oh, and we've also got uh, a new product, guys, which are our bee bricks. So do check them out. I'll put an overlay in of one of those. They are selling like hotcakes. And in fact, I'm very pleased to announce that we are now getting interest from some developers, some housing developers, who are now buying these in the dozen to include in some of the new build houses, which is absolutely brilliant. If you're a housing developer, if you work for a housing developer, get in touch, guys. We can offer you bulk discounts, obviously, on our little bee bricks along with some of the other products as well we're working on new products as well that can slot into um, brick faces so things such as the house martin boxes um, and some other products as well swift swift bricks as well so do check out the website for that if you are a developer of any sort or you know of any developers or if you uh, have people who work for develop know people that work for developers and you can sort of put a, a word in because we all need to be developing in a sustainable way these days to encourage wildlife to live alongside us because often as you guys know as i've been banging on about for a long time now the oases that are our urban gardens can be just that, an oasis for wildlife, more so than a lot of the surrounding agricultural landscape in many cases. So yes, our gardens and our houses really should be incorporated in every single way to live alongside wildlife. So yes, do get in touch, guys. So, and I've also got a, a House Martin Tower that we are now selling on the website, which I can't wait to put my first one of those up. I think I've got a client lined up for one um, and they are very, very successful. And this is literally a tower full of House Martins. So uh, yeah, my kind of heaven. Anyway, so number four, hedgehog boxes, guys, and hedgehog, you know, like I say, hibernaculums, do try and provide for them. They will start to go into hibernation from November time. And if you are considering a bonfire, which I do not recommend for fireworks night, A, for the carbon emissions from burning all the wood, it's just I'm beyond unnecessary if you ask me. Um, but if you are, or if you're attending a bonfire event, then please make sure the base is checked for hedgehogs because of course, right at the beginning of November, right when they're going to, go in, going to be going into hibernation, they are no doubt going to head straight for these big heaps of wood and brash and timber, whatever it may be. So I dread to think how many hedgehogs don't make it out alive the other side of a bonfire on November the 5th, unfortunately. So please do check for hedgehogs before you attend one of these events. So number five, guys, nearly there, I promise. Thank you for bearing with me for this one. Um, number five is get some bulbs in the ground. Now, now is a great time up until sort of Christmas time is a great time to get some bare root bulbs in the ground. So this is things such as crocus, bluebells, snowdrops, um, aconites, snakes and fritillaries, wild garlic, uh, those sorts of plants which are going to be a really good source of nectar and pollen in the spring months and from early next year when of course things such as our bumblebees when they start emerging some of them uh, and honeybees particularly as well can sometimes be out in January so snowdrops really good from kind of middle of January onwards into February for providing one of the first sources of nectar for a lot of insects that emerge well, not a lot but the majority of insects that emerge um, yes yeah, so getting some bulbs in the ground now is a really good time obviously check out the online shop guys if you're looking to buy them we've got some offers on the more you buy but now is a great time while there's still a little bit of warmth in the ground and the ground's not completely saturated there's nothing worse than having freezing cold wet hands we've all been there as gardeners uh, yes yeah, so now is a really good time as we move into 
November it's going to be perfect for you to get some spring bulbs in the ground so you can have some spring colour into next year and just add to the floral diversity obviously the main thing you want to do within any wildlife garden is to increase the uh, time frame of nectar and pollen available for our pollinating insects so if you can start in January and finish in October time November time you're doing pretty good so yes lots of bulbs get some in your garden guys obviously if you want any advice on what species to pick for any shady areas or quantities then just get in touch inquiries at wildgarden.com so number five get some bulbs in the ground so number six and I can't really do one of these videos without mentioning one of these can I is get some water in your garden or a wildlife pond if you can now obviously for those of you that live in a flat you may only have a balcony you may only have a small few square meters um, in a townhouse in the middle of a city somewhere but you can still add water to your garden whether that's even just a bathing bath or like a bird bath for birds but also if you've got some cobbles and stones around the edges you'll often find bees and smaller insects coming to get water from it so having a bird bath is great if you can do nothing else you can of course have a barrel pond as well and obviously check out the barrel pond video i made on how to make a wildlife barrel pond on the channel that i have yeah featured in my own garden a couple of times and it's proved really successful and i know a lot of you guys have said how many uh, forms of wildlife have visited your barrel pond obviously the birds will come to bathe and drink you'll get damselflies visiting loads and loads of insects as well so uh, yes a barrel pond really great and of course if you move house you can partly empty it and take it with you so they are brilliant for that kind of situation and of course if you're in a rented property and you can't dig into the ground or maybe you aren't physically able to dig into the ground uh, in your own house then a barrel pond is a really nice way of sprucing up a corner of the garden or your patio area just by adding some water it just adds a certain feel to the area i think so uh, but of course if you can go the whole hog get yourself a wildlife pond you guys have seen enough videos about me waffling on about wildlife ponds they are the best thing you can do for wildlife in your own garden and it goes without saying obviously guys wildgarden.com we can supply you with the fleece the liner all the wildflower plants the oxygenators which are just kind of going into dormancy now so it's kind of uh, not the ideal time to buy although the rest of the plants can still go in and you can get them when they come out of dormancy in sort of april may time next year along with the oxygenators as well but now is a great time as i say to get your pond liner in and just let your pond fill up naturally through the winter months natural rainwater is the best way to fill a pond up over a tap obviously i have to use a tap given that it's kind of a commercial um setting if you like and i have to get these jobs done when i'm two three four five hours away from home uh before i leave and get it planted and finished so i have to use a tap most of the time but it does obviously the chlorine and everything does disperse in it so you don't have to worry too much but if you can use natural rainwater and let your pond fill up gradually obviously the winter months are usually damper and a bit wetter so hopefully you'll get uh, a nice pond full of natural rainwater which would be perfect for then planting up in the springtime so yes number six <laughs> is a wildlife pond or some water in your garden and obviously it goes without saying guys and i've done previous videos on this again on the channel um, making sure you've got some water available for birds to drink and bathe all year round even in the depths of winter they need to drink and bathe to keep their feathers in tip-top condition so yes make sure they don't freeze over completely and uh, yeah make sure birds have access to water 24 7 365 so number six get some water in your garden so number seven and finally guys thank you for bearing with me and if you're still with me at this point hats off to you number seven is spread the word and one way you can do that is to get yourself a copy of wild your garden now i think i owe a lot to this book really because it's the whole reason that this channel is here today which um the book obviously came out in 2020 and the youtube channel was started around about the same time as well in the springtime of 2020 so three and a half years ago now and look at where we've come from because the main thing about this channel guys is to create the community that we have here today which is just wonderful to see all of you coming back and leaving comments and um, positive um, reviews of the book on anywhere you can buy it obviously we have it online on the online shop uh, but just spread the word guys the, the reason I started this channel and I mean the reason I started this channel was to raise the awareness of conservation 
on your own doorstep in your back garden so the more we can share these videos you know send them to whoever we can send them to hopefully in time i will have covered enough topics for one of them to at least be relevant for whatever you're trying to do in your own garden or your own little space or your own allotment or your own green area that you've got as a community area or something like that and obviously wildly garden has a lot of the info you need within it on how to make wildlife ponds how to make wildflower meadows what trees and shrubs to plant how to plan your garden if nothing else this might make a good gift for somebody who's looking to start down that road who might have bought a new property or maybe you could get a copy of this for a loved one for for christmas or one of your friends anyway the main thing about it all is to just share the content guys if you can and obviously subscribe please it goes a long way to helping this channel boost how many people it reaches and therefore obviously helping more people create more habitats for wildlife around the world so yes i'm very very grateful to you all for everything you already do and thank you so much for supporting us obviously we are a small business the online shop as you've seen through the majority of this video we are increasing our products to try and help you guys create more habitats for wildlife so please consider shopping with us i don't like saying this and i, I don't like uh pleading for your business but i would say it is obviously we are a small business we're a small family run business and uh, the team works incredibly hard to provide you guys with everything you need to help wildlife within your own garden and of course so do i to bring you guys these videos uh, to bring you all the info you need as to how to feed the birds when to uh, cut your meadow and how to make a wild upon you know the score already and if you haven't like i say do subscribe to the channel please guys it goes a long way to helping spread the message so thank you so much i'm sorry if today's felt like a bit of a plug for the online shop but in all honesty the more we can help wildlife or the more products we can sell the more we can help wildlife hopefully that's the idea anyway and obviously thank you so much for the support guys if there are any questions you have any uh thing you'd like to say drop them in the comments below i'll do my best to answer them as soon as i can and as always stay wild guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon mm -hmm.